Kiwi Farms is, or was, I don't know if it's coming back, a forum dedicated to the discussion of lol cows. A lol cow is a person the forum designates as worthy of following solely to laugh at their exploits. The people they follow range from YouTubers and streamers to celebrities and journalists, to people who just happen to have a large Twitter following sometimes. They began as the Sawicki Forms, CWC Icky Forms, I don't know, devoted to the following of Chris Chan and laughing at all of the ridiculous drama that came out of him, but gradually evolved to keep tabs on pretty much everyone. I can understand the Kiwi Farm's impulse, frankly. They're a bunch of autistic data hoarders, and so am I. They like to watch a good train wreck, just like I do. But Kiwi Farms is, overall, an extremely distasteful place. They're rude and bigoted beyond belief towards the people they follow. They engage in regular troll operations against people who fall under their eye. They stalk, they dox, and they're not above IRL harassment, including 4chan prank shit like ordering a bunch of pizzas and taxi cabs to someone's house. Now, the users of Kiwi Farms are also smart enough not to post that shit on the site, like saying, Herder, I just sent PewDiePie 100 pizzas. So they outwardly appear to be innocent. But come on, how dumb do you think I am? I've got a thread on Kiwi Farms, for no real reason, frankly. I have no drama, no skeletons in my closet, with the exception of, I guess, being horrendous with deadlines for projects. And some people in my community are kind of mad about that. Fair enough. The vast majority of my thread is just made up bullshit. And it's pretty funny to see what internet schizos think about you sometimes. In case you guys ever get your site back, the next time you want to do weird sex rumors about me, you might want to remember that Naomi isn't Lilith and Naomi isn't trans. But overall, I'm not too bothered regarding what they say about me because I know it's not true. Nonetheless, I still don't like Kiwi Farms. They've bothered a few of my friends, and their threads coming up under the Google search for my friends' real names has caused quite a few IRL problems. And even if the people I cared about weren't affected, I would still consider the site an absolute cesspit. It is wild the length that these people can go to, to throw false rumors around and wreck people's lives. Multiple people have committed suicide, with the media blaming Kiwi Farms for it. June 29th, 2016, Julie Terryberry hung herself, with news articles speculating that it was Kiwi Farms' obsessive documenting of her life that led to it. June 19th, 2018, Chloe Segal set herself on fire. Kiwi Farms began documenting her life in 2013, after there was evidence she took money from her indie game fundraiser and used it instead on gender-affirming surgery. On June 27th, 2021, another trans indie dev going by the online handle of Near also killed themselves after getting harassed by Kiwi Farms. There's a chicken and egg conversation here regarding Kiwi Farms involvement. Clearly, what they're doing is morally reprehensible, but many people get shit on by Kiwi Farms and don't kill themselves. Me, Sargon, Destiny, Ethan Ralph, Vosh. If you're even a D-tier e-celeb, you've got a Kiwi Farms threat, and most people aren't offing themselves when a Kiwi Farms user shows up in the chat to be a little wiener. So it seems to be factually incorrect to say that Kiwi Farms killed these people, or even that Kiwi Farms drove them to suicide. These are people who already had lifelong problems. Chloe Segal was homeless and at the end of a rope. Nier was extremely depressed and dysphoric. Before Kiwi Farms ever got involved with these people, they were already spiraling downward. In fact, it was the opportunity to laugh at their downward spiral that attracted Kiwi Farms to them in the first place. This doesn't absolve Kiwi Farms, but it's entirely possible that these people would have killed themselves anyway. In case I'm not being clear enough, I don't approve of what Kiwi Farms does. And yet, the title of this video is In Defense of Kiwi Farms. Because as distasteful and grotesque as they are, I do think that sticking to my principles means that I need to draw a line somewhere. And that line has to be forcing Kiwi Farms offline. In order to talk about this, we've got to talk about Keffels. I will have to do a full video on her at some point, because she's also a truly grotesque person who has hurt a lot of people. But that's not for today. Today, we're only going to focus on her campaign to get Kiwi Farms kicked off the internet. On August 5th, 2022, Keffels was swatted at her home in Ontario, Canada. Her description of this event changed multiple times. First, Keffels said she woke up to an assault rifle pointed at her face. On August 5th, I was woken up by London Police Services pointing an assault rifle in my face. Then later, while being interviewed for Global News, she said that she had the rifle pointed at her in the hallway of her house. When I went into the hallway and then saw that assault rifle, I screamed and I, I thought I was going to die. The police later clarified in a public statement, saying that officers did not conduct what is sometimes referred to as a dynamic entry into Keffels' residence. Rather, they knocked on the door, announced themselves as police, and occupants answered. Keffels was arrested for uttering threats based on information officers had at the time. She was polite and cooperative. Keffels claimed to be dead named during her arrest. During the arrest, the police officer referred to me by my dead name. I was booked in the station under my dead name. The police, when talking to my mother, referred to me as her son. 
This is despite the fact that I have run as both a member of parliament and a member of provincial parliament under my name, Clara Sorrenti. The fact that a fake email led to London police services booking me under my dead name reveals the prejudice that many police have towards transgender people. This is despite the fact that the email contained my real name before ever even mentioning my dead name. This is one of the property bags returned to me after I was released from custody. All of the property bags returned to me have Roberts written on them. The proof for this is an evidence bag using her former family name, which she was able to show to Global News. The police's statement cleared this up too. While I can't confirm any conversations which might have transpired during Keffels' initial arrest, activity in our holding cells is monitored by audio and video equipment. At no time while she was in our holding cells did members of our police service address Keffels by her dead name and gender. I have personally reviewed the recordings and found our officers were polite, respectful, and professional. The reference to Keffels' former name appears to stem from the existence of prior police reports. Police are not normally notified when somebody legally changes their name. It appears the bag in which Keffels' personal property was held in was labeled with her dead name for tracking purposes. In other words, Keffels has a record from before she transitioned, and her old files hadn't been updated, because presumably she hadn't been arrested since then. What the actual swatting was, was two 911 calls directing the cops to Keffels' house with the claim she was going to shoot up City Hall, along with an extremely cringe letter that reads like a person who's never encountered a trans person before, trying to write in the voice of a trans person who hates cis people. It's pretty clearly a troll op, but I understand the police have to take these things seriously. The media attention Keffels gained from basically lying about all the details of her arrest eventually ballooned into a $100,000 GoFundMe for Keffels' legal fund against the police department for being the victim of a hate crime. Keffels moved out of her residence into a hotel, but she posted pictures of the hotel room online. Those pictures were reposted on Kiwi Farms. People discovered what hotel it was in those pics and began ordering pizzas to her room. She moved again, this time to an Airbnb, and her Uber account got hacked to send her food. After this, she moved to Northern Ireland, where she stupidly posted her location again, and somebody local to the area who follows these troll communities showed up at her apartment building. I really do have sympathy for people who get doxxed, but if you are repeatedly posting identifiable information after it happens multiple times, then it's either one of two possibilities. One, you're incredibly, ridiculously fucking stupid. Or two, you actually want this to happen because maybe you love the media attention. Maybe it's good for your channel. Maybe you've got a fundraiser for legal fees that's funding a two month vacation to Northern Ireland. What you don't do, though, is start setting up an IRL streaming backpack, unless you're actually trying to monetize these people who are following you around, which requires that they don't lose your trail. Anyway, Keffels is claiming that this all comes from Kiwi Farms. And fair enough. When Keffels posts her hotel room to social media, and then it gets posted to Kiwi Farms, and then suddenly pizzas show up, there's a missing link there. There's nobody in the Kiwi Farms Keffels thread screaming, I am the one who ordered the pizzas, but it's a reasonable assumption that somebody there did it. The question has to be asked, though, whose fault is it? I mean, it's clearly the fault of the guy who did the ordering, obviously. But is it Kiwi Farms' fault for hosting the images that Keffels herself made public? I don't think so. I don't intend for anybody to do anything whenever I publish a video. In fact, I explicitly say, don't bother the people I'm talking about. But if one of you listening decides to be an idiot and go against my wishes, is it my fault? No, of course not. Because I'm me and you're you. Taking Kiwi Farms down doesn't mean the individuals who are actually responsible have vanished off the planet. And yet, Keffels moved to take Kiwi Farms down, starting the trending hashtag Drop Kiwi Farms. They started by targeting Cloudflare, the domain register for KiwiFarms.net. Cloudflare initially resisted, saying it would set a bad precedent for a private corporation to be the judge of what legal content is and isn't allowed on the internet, a stance that I agree with. That was the whole point of the net neutrality fight, which progressives agreed with back then, but they were never interested in neutrality, only dominance. Eventually, though, Cloudflare gave in, replacing KiwiFarms.net with a splash page stating that Kiwi Farms is an imminent threat to human life. I understand how they came to that conclusion, considering the suicides linked to Kiwi Farms, but I want to make it clear. Those were only linked to Kiwi Farms by the media, and Keffels' claims about Kiwi Farms are also only backed up by her friends in the media as well. Jesse Singal, a freelance journalist who formerly worked for New York Magazine, did a deep dive into Keffels' claims about Kiwi Farms. Singal read the entirety of her Kiwi Farms thread, over 50,000 posts. Many of the posts were toxic, inflammatory, and certainly transphobic. That's not illegal, though, nor should it be. And it's also not anything that is a direct, violent utterance or an imminent threat to human life. Singal found only two posts that fit Cloudflare's definition. 
In both cases, the entire forum turned on these people for being glowies and fed posters, with new accounts that seem to have only been made to go into Keffels' thread and plant these very posts. No idea who did it, but considering that other flash-in-the-pan internet woke scolds with absolutely no morals, like Anita Sarkeesian and Brianna Wu, have both posed as themselves and directed hate towards themselves to further their goals, I personally wouldn't be surprised if it came out in the future that this was her or one of her pals. This is not to say that Kiwi Farms isn't a driver of harassment, it certainly is. There's a lot of toxicity over there. But there's a huge difference between this website is really nasty and mean, and I don't like what they say about me, and this website is an imminent threat to human life. Though it is likely, there's no proof that Kiwi Farms users are the ones harassing Keffels. It could be fans of The Quartering or Destiny, two other internet personalities who also have beef with her. It could be any number of other random trolls on the internet. And even if there is proof that it's Kiwi Farms users, that's not proof that Kiwi Farms itself is responsible. Considering that none of it actually happens on Kiwi Farms, Kiwi Farms only documents it. That's like saying, if I get murdered, the form that my murderer posts on is guilty of murdering me, if other users there talk about my murder. It's a ridiculous standard. But nonetheless, Keffels' drop Kiwi Farms operation was a success. Cloudflare is not allowing KiwiFarms.net to return. Joshua Moon, the owner of Kiwi Farms, moved his domain hosting to Russia under KiwiFarms.ru, though that is also experiencing some problems. The physical servers hosting Kiwi Farms itself are in a server farm in Ukraine, something that Keffels is aware of because she implied that the servers should be bombed as a part of the current Russian-Ukrainian war. Yes, that is a real thing she said. If I have any Ukrainian followers, here is the phone number and address for where Kiwi Farms is currently hosted. Do your thing. The site is down, but I know Joshua Moon has expressed warm sentiments to Vladimir Putin, and the site has many Russian supporters on it. I would let them know this. So, the main reason you might think that Kiwi Farms is somehow responsible for what's happened to Keffels and others, solely because they've documented and laughed at the events, is because we all know what a wink and a nudge looks like. But if that is your standard, then if you apply it to Keffels here, she's literally supporting terrorism, calling on Ukrainian partisans to bomb a server in their own country because of apparently pro-Russian posts on it. This is why Keffels is one of the single most revolting people on the internet. It's got nothing to do with her being trans, I don't give a shit about that. It's because she does everything that Kiwi Farms does, and more. But unlike Kiwi Farms, she's got the protection of the progressive establishment on her side, being both trans and a member of Canada's Communist Party. Like Kiwi Farms, Keffels spreads false rumors about people in an attempt to destroy their lives. Oh yeah, meanwhile he stealths people, which is legitimately a form of rape. Like Kiwi Farms, Keffels is fine with harassing people and gloating about their nervous responses to it. Like Kiwi Farms, Keffels is fine with her enemies getting swatted in exactly the same way she did. Like Kiwi Farms, Keffels is fine with her enemies getting doxxed and the family members of her targets losing their jobs. And it's not just her, it's the entire community that she fosters, just as they all accuse Joshua Moon of fostering a terrible community in Kiwi Farms. One of Keffels' mods doxed Chud Logic by posting a picture of his face. This wasn't public info. Another one, NE43, went hard on Destiny's Wikipedia article, trying desperately to get allegations of him working in coordination with Kiwi Farms to attack Keffels, despite Destiny having his own thread on the site, using two news articles as sources, both of which were published by those journo friends of Keffels, and both of which only use Keffels' word as their source. Destiny seems to be Keffels' next target. Now that she's got the power to destroy Kiwi Farms and has no moral scruples about stooping to their level to do it, why would she stop? Destiny has made 41% jokes about me, accused me of being a rapist, accused me of being a pedophile, and is now actively mocking me for being a childhood grooming victim. I do not regret at all my role in getting him deplatformed from Twitch because he deserves worse. What's worse than losing your job, Keffels? Assaulted? Tortured? Murdered? What are we talking here? Even if everything you're saying about him is true, and it's not, it's all just speech, it's all shit that you've also done to other people. One thing I will say about Kiwi Farms is, they don't actively lie. They may get things wrong, they may offer their own speculation. That's not the same thing as purposely lying, as saying something that they know to be false. They're there to digitally document and make fun of the real happenings of real people. And their community doesn't take kindly to liars. They aim for accuracy. But I can't even give that to Keffels. She's completely fine with saying things she knows are false in order to try and get a rise out of Destiny. And considering that she's now spinning up a false narrative that Destiny is intimately involved with Kiwi Farms, I have to wonder, is this a case of Keffels just destroying all the people who have ever spoken out against her grotesque behavior? Or is this just Destiny derangement syndrome? Kiwi Farms is a horrendous place filled with some very morally ugly people. It has caused 
cause my friends a lot of problems. But on principle, I must say that I hope it overcomes these issues and makes a return. It is a scary world we live in if the loudest, most abusive woke scold can just bully a website off the internet because she doesn't like getting flack, while at the same time behaving exactly like them and terrorizing her own targets. At the end of the day, Keffels did not deserve to get doxxed or swatted. On some level, I have no sympathy for her. She's legitimately as bad as Kiwi Farms. Both of them should still be around to continue spewing their toxicity because that's what free speech is. But it's unironically an abortion of justice that Kiwi Farms is gone and Keffels isn't gone along with them.